backdropped against international concern of an impending North Korean ballistic missile launch, two words, Mark India, announced the latest success for Aegis Ballistic Missile Defense BMD. Its seventh intercept of a ballistic missile target out of eight attempts with an SM-3 missile. And for the second straight time against a difficult separating medium-range target or MRT. The Missile Defense Agency, MDA, U.S. Navy, and Aegis BMD team continue exercising the sea-based element of the ballistic missile defense system. New ships and crews, new configuration, new missile, new challenge. Letting Navy operators train, operate, and understand the incredible Aegis BMD capability. The mission, bring an operationally certified standard configuration to the fleet using SM-3 deployment rounds, available whenever and however our nation needs to use it. Another Aegis BMD success. Stellar Predator Campaign FTM-10. The team delivers. Preparation for a major exercise like Stellar Predator FTM-10 takes great effort from the Aegis BMD team across the country and a lot is riding on this one. After years of building, testing, and learning, Aegis BMD is ready for another exam. The results will determine if the Navy gives Aegis BMD a passing grade, achieving a certified standard configuration with ballistic missile engagement capability. Getting ready for Stellar Predator includes a lot of training for officers and crews of participating ships, especially the SM-3 firing ship Shiloh. Training takes place at various Navy facilities around the country and on the ships too. Some key Aegis BMD training facilities include the Naval Surface Warfare Center, NSWC, in Dahlgren, Virginia. NSWC Dahlgren is the Aegis BMD schoolhouse where extensive classroom and hands-on training of sailors and officers takes place. Along with NSWC Dahlgren's training contribution, they have an important technical responsibility to perform for the Navy. They will conduct an independent assessment of the new Aegis BMD weapon system configuration named 3.6, being used during Stellar Predator, identifying its capabilities, limitations, and risk. Final recommendations to the Navy by NSWC Dahlgren in August will determine whether Aegis BMD 3.6 can be a certified standard configuration ready for fleet use. Besides Dahlgren, another Virginia location along the Atlantic coast, Wallops Island, provides a perfect marine test location for the Navy, including Aegis BMD training and testing. Located here is the Surface Combat Systems Center, or SCSC. SCSC is a perfect maritime test environment for conducting realistic tests, exercising the Aegis BMD combat system including the upgraded tactical computer programs in a land-based replication of the Aegis combat system. During spring 2006, early builds of the Aegis BMD 3.6 weapon system configuration were tested at SCSC, at times referred to as the Battle Group in the Sand. Another key Navy Aegis BMD facility north of SCSC is the cornfield cruiser USS Rancocas, properly named the Combat System Engineering Development Site, or CSEDS, in Moorestown, New Jersey. Late in February 2006 at CSEDS, engineers from Lockheed Martin, the Combat System Engineering Agent for the Aegis Combat System and Aegis BMD Weapon System, working with NSWC Dahlgren engineers, perform an evaluation assessment, or EA, on 3.6. In the BMD mini-suite, Navy personnel from the Aegis Tech Rep CSED military unit operate the system and exercise in a series of BMD test scenarios. Testing verifies 3.6 weapon system engagement, long-range surveillance and track LRS and T, and multi-warfare mission requirements using simulated interfaces with BMDS elements. At the conclusion of 3.6 weapon system testing, during the hot wash-up, Captain Greco speaks on Stellar Predator's importance only three months away. But it's getting 3.6 certified uh, and in the hands of the warfighter as a tactical baseline uh, is the most important pro priority for the program. As in previous BMD tests, extensive analysis and planning go into developing test scenarios. 
hundreds of Aegis BMD simulations are run to predict and verify a firing solution against the MRT. BMD team members, Lockheed Martin in Moorestown, New Jersey, Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab in Laurel, Maryland, and Raytheon Missile System Division in Tucson, Arizona, perform their simulation analysis, sharing results with the Aegis team. Additional analysis is conducted by NSWC Dahlgren and SCSC Wallops Island as Aegis BMD matures toward a Navy certified program. Development and testing of Raytheon's SM-3 Block 1A missile is also an important part of 3.6. As the designated deployment round for Aegis 3.6, FTM-10 will be the first time this enhanced SM-3 missile is used in a flight test. At the Naval Surface Warfare Center in Port Wanimi, California, Aegis BMD team members Military, government, and civilian meet at the Mission Control Panel, MCP, assessing mission readiness and status of the system before the campaign can begin. After presentations and deliberation, Stellar Predator is approved to proceed. Certification testing of Aegis BMD 3.6 and the SM-3 Block 1A in a flight test against a medium-range separating target is only a month away. There can never be too much preparation for a ship and crew before Aegis BMD testing. After a successful joint U.S. and Japan Aegis BMD test, named JCTV-1 in March, new BSP equipment is installed on board Lake Erie for their primary role in Stellar Predator. Early in 2006, Shiloh and Milius, home ported in San Diego, undergo the necessary Aegis BMD 3.6 configuration equipment installations. These include loading of the developing computer program, giving these Aegis equipped ships a ballistic missile engagement capability along with their traditional Aegis multi-mission role. The installations are involved, especially for Shiloh, the designated firing ship for the flight test. Shiloh's captain discussing BMD installations during dry dock. So there was a substantial amount of fabrication that was done for the system to be able to accommodate ballistic missile defense capability. Same thing, there are modifications to the launchers, there are modifications to the computer system. There was wiring all through the ship that was added and there were antennas put on board the ship for this shot, cameras. There were a lot of, of material changes that happened six months ago. And Along with the installation period, Shiloh and Milius welcome members from the Navy and Aegis team in May, conducting waterfront integrated testing and training exercises. WIT is performed on the test ship prior to each flight test. The purpose is to ensure proper installation, integration, and operation of the Aegis BMD system. This is particularly important in preparing Aegis BMD 3.6 for Stellar Predator. For training, the crews from Shiloh and Milius practice ballistic missile engagements with Aegis BMD using the Dockside Simulator, a high-fidelity target simulation tool developed by Lockheed Martin. Training alongside Shiloh's crew are selected crew of USS Chancellorsville, CG-62. Shiloh and Chancellorsville are scheduled for a sea swap during August, where the officers and crews of both cruisers swap their ships. Training of Chancellorsville crew now prepares them for the Aegis BMD mission area when they become the new crew of Shiloh. More training for the crew gears them up for the campaign. Finally, Shiloh and Milius depart San Diego and transit to Hawaii to begin the campaign, occurring over a three-week period in June. As part of WIT Sea Trials, Shiloh waits off Hawaii on the Pacific Missile Range for Event 1, a tracking exercise to begin. An ARAV-A short-range ballistic missile vehicle is used for TRACX. Joining Shiloh for the first event is Ballistic Missile Signal Processor BSP-equipped Lake Erie CG-70. Shiloh, operating the new Aegis BMD 3.6 weapon system, will conduct a simulated SM-3 engage on Aegis Spy-1 against the ARAV-A in preparation for the Event 2 flight test. Lake Erie continues its testing of BSP 2.0. Designed by Lockheed Martin, 
BSP boosts overall BMD weapon system ability to detect and identify multiple complex targets. During the tests, engineers measure BSP's ability to distinguish between a real hostile missile and a countermeasure, designed to decoy the SM-3 away from the nose tip. Open architecture designed BSP uses medium band and synthetic wide band signal processing, increasing Aegis extraction and classification capabilities while reducing the risk factor. Test equipment and Aegis test team ship riders are minimized during the tests. Accompanying these ships are members of the Navy's Operational Test and Evaluation Force, OPTEF-4, providing independent and objective evaluation of operational effectiveness and suitability of Aegis BMD. As in earlier tests, Stellar Predator continues the objective of demonstrating operational realism. The ships operate in a war cruise environment with an intelligence overlay for all four Stellar Predator events. Intelligence from 3rd Fleet Commander assigns Shiloh and Lake Erie a monitoring mission on Country Red's radical regime, watching for launch and possible engagement of a ballistic missile near friendly country Green. Now, integrated into Aegis BMD, Shiloh uses Mission Planner assisting the radar system's coordinator to develop Aegis spy radar search doctrine and set up search sector parameters to prepare for a potential ballistic missile launch. On the Pacific Missile Range Facility launch pad is a short-range ARAV-A ballistic missile. Positioned more than 300 miles from Country Red's missile launch facility are Shiloh and Lake Erie. Each is traversing within its assigned operational area. Officers and crews working from an intelligence overlay as part of their training know potential launch sites but don't know the precise hostile ballistic missile launch time. They wait, ready to detect, track and perform a simulated SM-3 engagement. The ships detect the ARAV-A ballistic missile at about the same time with their Aegis Spy-1 radars entering the designated radar search sector. Shiloh successfully searches, detects, and transitions to track. Fireball, 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 check. Number 80707. Check, push 81004 out over the link. Shiloh transmits the track over theater data link architecture via satellite to BMDS command centers. Auto engagement order. Captain RSO, good target, clear to fire. Captain I. All stations, batteries released. Fizz green. The ARAV-A target is engaged with a simulated dynamic missile using Aegis BMD AWS 3.6. Eagles away, track number 3202. Mark India, track number 3202. The simulated engagement is a success. Operating in a war cruise environment, they successfully detect and track the ARAV-A, exercising BMDS operational communication links. Lake Erie, using its BSP, detects, tracks, and gathers data for further analysis. Shiloh operates its Aegis BMD weapon system in the new 3.6 engagement configuration. With Event 1 successfully over, the ships head back to port in Pearl Harbor to prepare for the firing event, FTM-10. In port, three other Aegis ships are waiting for them, getting ready for the test. Before the ships depart for the flight test, a Mission Readiness Review, MRR, is held in Pearl Harbor to ensure everything is in order before the test can begin. What we're doing is very important, and we've got to get uh, we've got to get this capability in the hands of the warfighters as soon as possible. But it's got to work. And it's got to be safe. MRR results are positive. FTM-10 Event Two of Stellar Predator is days away. Departing Pearl Harbor, Shiloh makes a brief stop at Weapon Station Naval Magazine, Pearl Harbor. Two SM-2 Block 3A missiles are loaded for the first AAW firings in an Aegis BMD test, Event 4 Alpha. Finally, 
an SM3 Block 1A is loaded into a cell of the aft Mark 41 vertical launching system. Inside this canister is the first SM3 Block 1A missile ready to engage the MRT during the FDM-10 flight test. Located on the western end of the Hawaiian island of Kauai are PMRF and the Kauai Test Facility launch pads, the ballistic missile target control and launch facilities used for Aegis BMD. Here is where the MRT is assembled and readied for the FTM-10 launch. The separating target MRT is the threat representative ballistic missile used in this flight test. As technical direction agent for the Aegis BMD program, Johns Hopkins APL plays a role with the MRT. APL developed sensors are placed on board the target missile, providing a close-up view of the intercept. For the second time, APL's developed multi-purpose sensor payload was integrated with the MRT. The sensor payload collects video and infrared imagery of the target's boost and post-boost phases of flight, video coverage of the target's re-entry vehicle separation event, and spectral, radiometric, and video coverage of the intercept. Five Aegis ships are hundreds of miles from the launch site each ship in its designated patrol area. Shiloh, Lake Erie, Milius, DDG-69, Paul Hamilton, DDG-60, and ally ship Kirishima, JDS-174. Based on intelligence reports, U.S. Navy BMD ships use Mission Planner, now integrated into Aegis BMD, to help the Spy-1 radar set up their BMD radar search sectors. Besides Mission Planner, a new Aegis BMD tool, developed by Lockheed Martin, is used for the first time. It's called SCUS, System Calibration Using Satellites, where satellite track data gathered by Shiloh will allow for tiny corrections to be applied for physical SPY-1 array face bias. Knowing precisely where the SPY-1 radar is radiating the ballistic missile target is important in achieving target intercept. Shiloh and Lake Erie have similar roles as executed in Event 1. Shiloh is preparing to launch on Aegis Spy-1 with the new SM-3 Block 1A, now resting inside a canister in a cell of the aft Vertical Launching System, VLS. Lake Erie will detect and track the MRT and use BSP to gather test data for extraction and classification analysis. Additionally, Lake Erie commands a surface action group linked with the other Aegis ships except for Shiloh. As part of a homeland defense scenario, Lake Erie and Milius prepare to receive target queued acquisition data from the Transportable Radar Sensor Experimental, or TIPSY-X X-Band Radar on Kauai. TIPSY-X target data is sent to BMDS command centers and relayed to Lake Erie and Milius through a satellite data link. This testing of data links and queuing across the BMDS network and command centers is an important part of stellar predator testing. Milius' position close to Shiloh is also using the Aegis BMD 3.6 weapon system. And for the first time, a destroyer will conduct a simulated SM3 engagement of the MRT. Paul Hamilton and Karishima are exercising together performing long-range surveillance and tracking of the MRT in a linked configuration. Two data links are used in Event 2 to exchange track information with other BMDS elements. Continuing the test objective of operational realism, the ships receive intelligence reports directing their movements, providing both theater and homeland defense BMD coverage. At their battle stations in the morning hours of June 22nd are the officers and crew who will execute the flight test. Crews are at space warning condition yellow readiness, awaiting a hostile ballistic missile firing. For the flight test, Aegis Auto BMD Weapon Doctrine missile engagement is used. With Auto BMD Weapon Doctrine, the system automatically computes a recommended time to fire and engage the target with an SM-3 missile. Aegis BMD will alert the Missile System Supervisor, MSS, when to press the fire key. After a series of increasing threats, the ships receive their latest intelligence reports. Set space warning red, weapons tight. 
they are at the highest state of alert for a ballistic missile launch. The ships get no target launch countdown. They must be ready to react to hostile actions and detect a threat launch. Mission Planner helps direct SPY-1 radar search volume, which is important for early target detection. The engagement against the MRT is the longest range attempted to date by Aegis BMD. With this operational test scenario, it will take about six minutes from the time the MRT is launched before the SM-3 can reach and destroy its ballistic missile target. The MRT provides a real-time view with its video camera as it climbs above the atmosphere and into space. Aegis Spy-1 radar on the Aegis ships detect the target as it enters their radar search sectors. During MRT flight, the re-entry vehicle separates from its booster. Seconds later, Milius transmits the MRT track data over Link 16 back to the Ballistic Missile Defense System, BMDS. On engagement order. Captain Arso, good target. Green range simulated clear to fire birds and eagles within safe firing bearings. After the set space warning red, weapons free is announced. Shiloh's commanding officer authorizes the vertical launching system in preparation to fire. All stations, batteries released. Fizz is green. Battle sword enabled. Spy-1 radar transitions to target track and distributes information to the Aegis weapon system. Spy-1 radar processing determines that the target is in its ballistic flight phase and the Aegis system declares the MRT track as engagement quality. Now, SPY-1 works to identify the nose tip. Aegis processes the target automatically for engagement in the auto BMD mode and initiates the engagement order to the Missile System Supervisor, or MSS. Upon receiving a recommend fire alert, MSS presses the fire authorization variable action button. Shortly after SM-3 launch, the SPY-1 radar system acquires and tracks its SM-3 missile. All stations, Captain. This is red. The Aegis weapon system continuously updates its precision fire control solution to engage the target. Acceleration commands computed by the Aegis weapon system are transmitted to the SM-3 missile via SPY radar uplink message data, keeping it on a target intercept path. After second stage burnout and separation, the Aegis weapon system updates the SM-3 with both its and the target's position and velocity data. With the longer MRT flight path, the Aegis weapon system gives data commands to the SM-3 missile to perform two pulse burns with a delay between pulses called a burn-ditch burn. After the second third stage rocket motor, TISRIM, pulse burn is complete. While coasting, the missile performs a pitch maneuver, ejecting the nose cone, while maintaining a collision course on the target. The third stage attitude control system orients the missile so that it points at the target. Before the KW is ejected, the Aegis system gives Phase 3 uplink information to the TISRIM, providing Aegis target and object track data to the SM-3. The Aegis weapon system places the target dead center in the SM-3's field of view with its spy radar accuracy. In an animated view of the closing sequence, using offset guidance, the KW acquires the MRT after rejection from the third stage. The KW, using its infrared or IR seeker, correlates its tracks to those received from Aegis to distinguish the target from other objects quickly driving the KW to the target with divert guidance. A square around the target image indicates that the target is in track and KW divert guidance has commenced. A direct target hit. The target is destroyed. The KW intercepts the MRT at the desired aim point, with the KW working on the principle, anything can be destroyed 
if you hit it hard enough. Anything. It's seventh success out of eight firings. The test provides an important data gathering opportunity with a variety of optical sensors and radar systems observing FTM-10. Sensors clearly show the lethal MRT destruction by the Aegis SM-3 missile. This is a slow motion Halo 2 airborne system recording of the KW target impact showing the SM-3 third stage and the KW. These images show the KW impacting the MRT. Aegis BMD data link transmission allows the MDA community and guests to witness another BMD success. So today, 3.6 fired a missile into space with a Block 1A missile. My crew's performance was remarkable, but not unexpected. The training that they've received, not only in association with FTM 10, but with the, with the Aegis program and its long history of training people, is, is second to none. FTM 10 is a further demonstration of our ability to reach our goal of genuine ballistic missile defense, not only for the United States, but for our forces and our allies abroad. Remaining at sea after FTM 10 are the Aegis ships. Stellar Predator Campaign has two more BMD tests to conduct until completion. One of the hallmarks of Aegis has been its design as the Navy's premier surface combatant at sea today. Aegis's ability to conduct multi-warfare missions is unsurpassed. The addition of the Aegis BMD mission has given the Navy and engineers at Lockheed Martin, the Navy's Aegis Combat System agent, a major challenge as they updated the Aegis weapon system accommodating its new role as a ballistic missile killer while maintaining its powerful multi-warfare capabilities such as shooting down a cruise missile. Event 3 tests to see if the engineers got it right and sailors can operate it. Shiloh has to conduct a simulated BMD engagement against a short-range ARAV-A target while simultaneously conducting an AAW engagement against a low-flying BQM-74E target drone. The stakes are high to see if Shiloh can conduct both missions simultaneously. Besides Shiloh, three other Aegis ships are at sea in Event 3, 2. Milius, along with Shiloh, operates with Aegis BMD 3.6 and conducts a simulated SM-3 engagement on the ARAV target in addition to conducting a simulated tomahawk strike against the ARAV launch site. Paul Hamilton and Karishima continue to conduct long-range surveillance and tracking on the ARAV-A and are linked together on their last test of Stellar Predator. The Navy and MDA also use Event 3 as a risk reduction exercise for FTM-11, the next Aegis BMD test. In addition to the ARAV, Shiloh and Milius have the opportunity to conduct a simulated AAW engagement against a BQM-74 target drone similar to a cruise missile. The crews are on alert, waiting to see the track of the ARAV target and drone. A Navy G-1 aircraft. A Navy G-1 aircraft is used to carry the BQM-74 drone. I too, uh, clear to launch. Launch, launch. The G-1 releases the BQM-74 drone and it heads towards Roger, the ships. With the drone flying inbound, the ARAV target is launched. Captain Arso, good target. Green range simulated clear to fire birds and eagles within safe firing bearings. All stations, Captain, batteries released. Fizz is green for birds and eagles. Auto engagement ordered on the BMD. Kill track 3167 with birds. Eagles away. Shiloh and Milius detect, track, and finally perform simulated engagements conducting both Aegis BMD and AAW simulated engagements against the ARAV target and the drone. The results are impressive. 
Mulcania, truck number 3167. Arriving back in Pearl Harbor after event three are Paul Hamilton and Karishima, while Shiloh and Milius prepare for event four. In Event 4 Alpha, Shiloh prepares to perform live AAW engagements against two BQM-74 target drones using SM-2 Block 3A missiles. They continue operating with Aegis BMD 3.6. On the ground are the BQM-74 target drones ready for launch. After the BQM-74s are launched, they fly toward the ships. Their flight path is similar to a cruise missile at low altitude. The ships detect the targets and range safety clear Shiloh to fire their SM-2 missiles. TO RC RSO, targets are approaching low altitude control. Auto engagement order. Battle short enabled. Vampire, 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 track 3173. All stations, batteries released. Fizz is green. Air tail, kill Vampire with birds. Birds way, track number 3017. As Shiloh is engaging the BQM-74 drones, Milius verifies its AEW capability by conducting simulated engagements on the BQMs as Shiloh engages the BQM-74 drones with live missiles. The results are spectacular. Both drones are destroyed. On the ground, another two BQM-74 drones are ready for Event 4 Bravo. During the second part of Event 4, one of the drones carries a jammer to avoid detection using electronic countermeasures. After the BQM-74s are launched, they fly toward the ships. Despite the jamming environment, both ships detect the targets. Engaging the drones, they conduct simulated engagements successfully. Again, verifying Aegis BMD anti-air warfare capabilities. Ships return to port with mission accomplished at the conclusion of Event 4 flight testing named Stellar Predator Campaign is over. Stellar Predator's results demonstrate that Aegis BMD is now an integral part of the multi-mission capable Aegis weapon system. Excitement and a lot of confidence in the system. Anyone who's got a chance to get involved with BMD, do it. It's a whole new level of capabilities. You flew down a missile that was in outer space. You know, that's it's amazing how things can just do that. Another chapter opens in U.S. Navy history. Missile defense, a new and vital mission for the Navy and our nation. Defending America, our friends and allies. Aegis BMD, fully engaged, deployed, and working.